All right, today I want to talk about why you should never, ever, ever, ever use the static keyword. I just got myself one of these so I can mount a camera and make some videos while being in the car, multitasking. I saw now just to clean the area, so we'll just quickly do that. Clean! How does this work? Whoa, that's so cool. Sweet. All right, so when people say never, usually they mean hardly ever. But I mean, I think it's a better practice to just say never use static than hardly ever. Because if you go by hardly ever, I think we're gonna use it too much. So here's the reason why. Before I go on a rant on why you shouldn't use it, I think it's okay to use static if your project is a toy project. Like code bases that you would never share with anybody else, right? Code that nobody would ever have to read and understand and maintain. And I think the keyword here is actually maintain. Now, having that said, let's talk about the other cases. So there are two reasons, and I'll talk about them as if they were two but they're actually very correlated, but it's, but it's easier to think of them as two, perhaps. So one is the concept of change, and the other one is the concept of globals. So global scope and global state. But let's start with the first one. There's a quote, I can't actually remember who said this, but check out the description, I'll, I'll link to whoever said this. But there's a guy who said that one man's constant is another man's variable. That's just spot on, right? Everything is relative. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you know what the world looks like. Don't be a fool, right? What you think is a constant, someday might turn into be, turn out to be, or turn out to have to be a variable. Or for another user, it might be have to be a variable. And the important part here is to note that another user naturally means, doesn't mean end user, that means whoever is using the thing that you made static. So if you have a class and that class has a method and you made the method static, then the person we are talking about here is the person who uses your static method. So you might think that it was okay to make it static because you thought it was a constant. Now we're make, using the word constant in a sort of very liberal sense. Because you thought it was constant, but that person, for that person, it might need to vary. So that's one of the aspects. The other aspect is globals. There's another great talk about, I can't remember the name of that guy either, but there, there's another great talk, uh, I think it's called like the Clean Code Talks. It was uh, a series a while ago at Google. So I'll link that in the description as well. But, but he, he talks about how singleton pattern is just an excuse for working with globals. It's just globals, it's nothing else. And I want to make the case that statics are globals. So, so think about the word global. I mean, we all know that globals are bad, but, but why are globals actually bad? We have global scope and we have global state. So global scope means access, right? You can access it from anywhere, right? That's bad because, it's in a very naive sense, because you would run out of sensible variables, right? And you would probably naturally scope your variables by name so that you could make sense of them, right? Like player underscore health underscore max, whatever. But more importantly, the second point, the second point of the second point, <laughs> is the second point in terms of globals is state much more dangerous, global state. If you're in an instance met method and you read or write to global state, that means that some things may have some values that you are not in control of. I've got that yearly check of the car today and I just went in to get some oil cleaned out from under the hood. <laughs> right, but now, so that's done. Moving on to the next, let's get the car washed. So let's not dwell on why we shouldn't use globals because I'm pretty sure you already agree that globals are bad. I mean, there are a multitude of reasons. For example, that your systems are harder to reason about because your components would be harder to reason about because your component depends 
on state outside of themselves, which means that the component could behave differently depending on in which context you ran it, and that it might not be that particular component that has inflicted the, the state that it depends on. It could be another component, right? Anyways, given that we agree that globals are bad, I would think that you, after thinking a bit about it, or perhaps this was your opinion before, you agree that statics are actually just globals, right? Because statics are just namespaced globals. What do I mean? I mean statics are global state, but not global scope, right? As in namespace, as in that term, as in I should rather perhaps say global namespace. They're not in the global namespace, but they have global state, okay? Let's dig into this. What do you use static for? I'll, two, two common suggestions. You have a class and you create instances of it and you want to keep track of how many instances or a list of the instances or something like this. And then it's very convenient to just put that as a static method on the class. So you would have player and uh, the player class, whenever you instantiate a new player, you add that player to the static array in the player class, right? And this is super common. I mean, Rails, for those of you who've worked with Ruby on Rails, you have a lot of user-specific functions on the class. You have static functions on the class to reason about instances. So you have user.find, capital U, user.find, to find instances of users, which means that somewhere there's uh, some kind of manager of users that's accessible via this global state um, accessor, right? So the other very common way that people use static is uh, to, to, to do like utility kind of stuff, right? Like math.random or what, well, any kind of math function really? Or like, you know, like say string manipulation, for example. So you would have like, let's say you want to do some crazy reg access, right? And instead of putting that in an instance of something, you just make a utility class where you can pass in strings and get back the parse strings and uh, or pieces of that string and whatever, whatever. Utility, essentially. Or, or also commonly called help, helpers, right? These often do not actually have state. I mean, math.random does have state, of course, math, because, you know, there's no such thing as random in the computing world, so we have pseudo-random numbers, which means that we use state to generate what seems to be random numbers. But a lot of these utility functions don't necessarily need to have state. Right? So when I say, yeah, but static means that you have global state, you might interject and say, yeah, but the way I use static, I never use state. I never use state. Okay, fair enough. And that's why we have, that's why I said this is a two-piece argument. That's why I said there's the global state part, <clears throat> but there's also the change part. If you have any reason to believe that something might change in the future, don't use static. If you have any reason to believe it, right, whatsoever. It's very, it's very simple. Uh, if you've read Refactoring by Martin Fowler, or I mean, regardless, I'm pretty sure you're well aware of the concept. Because of replace conditional with polymorphism. Common refactoring that's uh, been given a name by Martin Fowler, right? Conditionals breed. Right? In, in the words of Sandy Metz, conditionals breed and conditional, conditionals in, increase the cyclomatic complexity of your source, source code and makes it hard to reason about because you have all these branches of things that could happen and you have to handle all of these different cases. But that's, uh, again, like that's a totally different topic. We'll talk about ifs sometime, sometime else. But assuming that you buy into the concept that it's good to reduce the number of switches, it's good to reduce the number of conditionals, then you should want to use concept of replacing polymorphism, damn it, I mean replacing conditionals with polymorphism. But you can't do that if you make your methods, if you make your members static. You can't replace them with polymorphism if you make them static. Then they're static, right? If you think about it, how do you use something, is which, something that is static in your source code? If you want to say, let's talk about Rails, if you want to say User.find. If you want to find a user, you say user the class user.find. 
when you get when you get serious about software design you'll get into contact with with the saying that the the new keyword is is dangerous so i'll stop here to wash the car but let's just finish this this line of thought before we get going so <clears throat> Why is the new keyword dangerous? It's dangerous for the same reason. It's dangerous because when you say, let's take something more specific. Let's say we have cats in our application. We say cat.new, right, in, in Rails or in, or sorry, in Ruby or whatever in some other language. I mean, new, new cat, right? You instantiate a cat. You type in the word, when you type in the word cat, you've coupled the thing that you're typing in, the class that you're typing in, you've coupled that two cats, which means that you can change your mind later. What if you say, ah, actually there are two kinds of cats. In this particular scenario, I want to use a different kind of cat. I want to inherit from cat and uh, make it specialized in some way and then <clears throat> use that one here. You can't do that because you have a concrete cat. So this is when, when you really start to understand dependency injection, right? The new keyword is dangerous because if you instead use dependency injection, you can change your mind later. You can just say, I want something that corresponds to this particular API, that behaves in this particular way, duct typing, right? Now we're getting into some serious object-oriented programming, some serious OOP. You shouldn't care about what it is, right? There's, there's tons of concepts that support this, right? We, we can say, <clears throat> you, you should program to interfaces and not to implementations. That's one, right? There's um, a good architecture is to maximize the number of decisions not made, right? And, and by dependency injecting, you can defer the decision because you just care about the API of the thing that you want. You don't necessarily care about the concrete type, right? So trying to backtrack, where was I? Ah, and when you understand that the new keyword is dangerous, it's very easy to understand that calling a static method or a static variable, accessing a static method or a static, a static variable is equally dangerous because you type in the name, much like you type in new cat, right? In the same way, do you type in user.find, which means that later on you can't change your mind. You can't say, actually, I would want domain object.find or I would want entity.find or record.find, right? You can't change your mind. You have, I mean, obviously you can always change your mind by rewriting source code, but you can change your mind dynamically, which is the point here. You can't change your mind runtime. You can't change your mind, think about this, open, uh, the open, uh, the open closed principle. You have to be, you should be open for extension. You should be open for extension, but closed for modification. You can't support the open closed principle if you use statics. How could you? In order to change what the static does, what that static thing that, you, that you've used, to change what that does, you need to change the source code. There's no way of dynamically overriding it. There's no way of, of runtime changing it. You have to rewrite. Okay, rant over. Let's get the car washed and then let's talk about testing. Oh, the washer is broken. <laughs> All right, did some shopping. Got to get the vitamins. So the weather was shitty, but it's turning even shittier. Let's talk about testing then, right? Let me be kind of brief and just emphasize how this uh, affects testing. Whoa. If you've ever dwelled into uh, the land of unit testing, you're probably aware that you can actually unit test in isolation. And it's just a matter of writing better source code. If you write source code that's decoupled, you can test components in isolation. If you write shitty code, you can't test in isolation. Everything is an integration test because all of your components just are, are totally hard coupled to other components of your system. But if you decouple properly, you can test in isolation. The point is this, with statics, you can't test in isolation. It's possible that in, in some scenarios, of course, it would be possible, but you can't be sure, and that's the point. When you're using static members, right? essentially, you make a hard connection between the user and the used object, right? or the used 
class or method or whatever. So you have some component under test, right? You have something you want to test. You want to unit test a class, let's say, and, and in that class you have a method, and you want to unit test that method, and that method integrates with another static method, such as, for example, user.find, I mean, capital U user.find, then if you're doing an integration test, fair enough, that's fine, you would want that integration. But if you're doing a unit test, you don't want to call user.find, right? It might be, let's, let's make an example. I mean, it might be that user.find makes a database call, right? And if you're doing a unit test, you don't want to integrate with the database. You just, I mean, you just want to test that particular method. I'm not saying you have to, okay? But I talked about the guy who does the, who, who did the talks at Google uh, before. I, he did a, b a bunch of dependency injection talks. He, I think he puts it very, very nicely. At least uh, you have choice. If you don't use static, right? But he's talking about singleton. But if you don't use static methods, at least you're giving the other thing using your thing, right? The other class using your class, at least you give that the choice of not integrating with that particular thing. So if it's, if it's user.find, if the find method lives on a repository which is an instance, right? Then because of open closed principle, and if you use dependency injection properly, then the person writing the test can inject a mock, right? Without any sort of strange kind of wiring, just plain old constructor injection, right? You inject a mock and then you can test the, the user class in isolation. But if you have statics, if you have user.find statically, you can't test that in isolation, right? No matter what you do, you will call user.find, right? You would need some serious plumbing in order to be able to test it in, in isolation. So the guy next to me thinks I'm crazy because I'm talking to a camera in, in the car. I'm not sure if he sees the camera. In that case, I'm just crazy. So uh, let's wrap up here. I don't think these are particularly controversial statements. So let me know what you think. Please uh, do leave, leave some comments if you agree or disagree or yeah, have any kinds of other thoughts. So thanks for having this chat. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheerios. Wish me good luck with the car. Success. I passed. Uh, but now it's totally raining, so free car wash. Okay, focus on the road. By the way, I've got uh, a tripod by Joby as well. Like they make three sizes of these tripods with three legs. One of them is tiny, one is sort of medium sized and one is uh, large. Don't buy the tiny one, it's totally useless, it's so small. But I'll link the other ones in the description because they are totally awesome. Side note.